Hi everyone, welcome to the Personal Brand Power Hour. I'm your host, Sophia Splino. I am a social media and personal brand coach that helps women around the world build their brands. I specialize in helping women, typically from the ages of 40 plus, build their personal brands and do the things that they never thought they could do and use the internet to make lots and lots of money. If you don't already know my journey, I am 30 years old. I thought I was straight for a long time and I was in a great relationship with a man before, but I realized that I was a lesbian and left that relationship, which sounds simple, except that I didn't know how I was gonna make it on my own. And thankfully, during the time I was with him, I had built a personal brand. Many of you follow me most likely because of our relationship content. And that was an asset for me. When I left, I was able to never get a regular job and just immediately jump into growing my personal brand aggressively and coaching women around the world on how to make a purposeful, profitable personal brand. And I know, I know if I can do it, you can do it. And here's the thing, you guys have, you guys have some leverage on me right here because I made mistakes along the way. I built my personal brand not caring if it was for business or for pleasure. It was all fun and games until it wasn't anymore and I needed to depend on myself financially. Let me take off my glasses because the light's shining super bright and making a little glare. For those of you who follow me on Instagram, you'll see that last night, my bookkeeper sent me my profit loss statement. And I literally spent the entire night till one in the morning crying on the floor, literally. I got on the floor and I was like, thanking God and myself that I didn't give up on myself because I could have totally, hey, made my way, thank you for liking it, invite your friends. Um, I was crying on the floor because if I, if I would have given up that day and, and, and just said, oh my God, I'm just going to go get a job right now because like, I don't know how I'm going to do this, how I'm going to make it, I would not be where I am today. And now I'm actually employing women who I want to help. It's amazing. The cycle continues. <laughs> the, the freedom is contagious. So throw a heart here if you can feel the energy is high. And if you can feel that you believe in yourself just a little bit more because right now in this moment connected with 64 random humans around the world you're with people who are bettering themselves you're here because you want to better yourself you're already in the right place to make a big difference in your life and i'm so excited to do it with you okay how is the sound i'm testing on a new mic i had a few questions today in my instagram uh, little messages where I was like, hey guys, tell me what you want to talk about tonight in the Personal Brand Power Hour. And people were asking about equipment. So we will be talking about equipment that I recommend and that I use. I'm testing out a different mic. Can someone just confirm that they can hear me super clearly? I am getting over a little cold. So I do sound a little bit silly there. Hi, Jojoba. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Future wife. I love it. I love it. Welcome to lesbians. Okay, so, oh, thank you, Jen. It's so glad to see you here. Okay, I'm so excited to answer the questions that I got today, but to go back to this story, first of all, as I'm telling this story, I want you to recognize something. This is a, a teaching moment. Oh, Rachel, oh my God, I just bought one of uh, the yoga mats that you recommended me years ago. See how that all works, guys? Like. I know Rachel for yoga and I will always remember her for yoga and her personal brand when I knew her at least was yoga and it's always going to come back. Like if she had a discount code for something, I would believe her and her opinion and what she said about it because she built that personal brand even in college. Her Instagram was so yoga that I knew I could trust it. And even now I, I will never forget Rachel for her yoga. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So here's the deal. You're listening right now because I'm telling you a story of my life. So I wanna encourage you, no matter what your experience is, whether you think that you have something to share or not, I guarantee you have a story and people need to know about it. You went through something that you didn't know how you would overcome it. Whether that was a sickness, whether that was how you manage your fitness, whether that is struggling um, with your 
the way I was, like not knowing if I was straight or whatever. Um, there's a niche for everything. And what's really cool is the life coaching industry is really unregulated. It's not like being a doctor. You can just start your business, teaching what you know, telling people how to cook, teaching busy moms how to organize. Like there's so many ways you can build a personal brand. There's literally no excuses. You can make big money online if you want to. So back to my story, I left a man, I didn't know how, I know how is gonna make it on my own. And I'm so glad that I thought, you know what? This is an opportunity this year, I'm gonna turn my personal brand around. Hi Kayla, welcome. I'm gonna turn my personal brand around and I'm going to use social media to make money. I'm never giving, going to go get a regular job, not that there's anything wrong with it, but I was like, I'm not doing this. And I was so glad that I dedicated myself to growing my personal brand and making money online so that I would never have to go get that job, okay? Because that will suck the life out of you. And probably the reason you like, like, enjoy my content is because there's life in me. It's contagious, it's the energy. If you're feeling that energy now, please heart it, please share with a friend. Let people know that we're going live and we're about to learn some incredible things. I know, I know for a fact that one thing I share tonight is going to change someone's life. And the reason I say that with confidence is because when I first saw my coaches show up online and share their stories and share how they overcame something, something one time eventually something clicked in me and I saw myself differently. I saw myself as powerful. I saw myself worthy of building something beyond what I had done before. And so tonight I want to I want to teach you so you don't make the same mistakes I did. I used the internet for fun and games for so long and now I'm only about it if if I can profit or it pleasures me, okay? There there's nothing in life that I I will stick around for unless it's profit or pleasure. And I think it's just that simple. Are you pleasured or is it profitable? Because for the longest time, I did things running around and it wasn't profitable. So tonight we're gonna talk about exactly what is. Okay, let's start with a question. Let's start with a question that I got from someone today asking, what are my do's and my don'ts for making major money once you have over $10,000, I'm assuming she means a month. So, okay, if you are in a place in your life where you're making over $10,000 a month and you're ready to level up and you wanna know what not to do, what not to waste money on, I might say something differently than what you've heard in the past. So, I think it's clear to everybody, I really like nice things and I hustle so I can have the nice life I have. With that being said, I pick and choose what's luxury to me. So to be honest, I live in a very small one bedroom apartment and I spend my money on travel and luxury goods and luxury food, savings, retirement fund, and of course taxes. <laughs> So that is where I choose to put my money. I think everyone's version, oh, and fitness. Like um, my fitness is included with my apartment, which is amazing, but I spend a good bit of money on athletic clothes because I like feeling really cute when I'm working out. So it, everyone's version of wealth is completely different. Thank you, Made by Wade, for liking. If you're enjoying this live, go ahead and share it with your friends right now. If you feel like you're being encouraged, share it with a friend. Share it so we can share the love. So I spend my money and my version of wealth is so different of what someone else would identify as wealth. And I think the best advice for this is get very clear on what your priorities are. Because I will tell you this, once people know you are successful, people will ask for more favors. It will be really challenging to say no to certain things. So for instance, like everything goes up like from where you get your hair done to the shampoo you use which this week i was like i'm it doesn't matter that i can is it wise for me to spend a, like hundreds of dollars on shampoo uh for me it's not i'd rather put that money towards nice food or a bag i don't know saving it investing it i automatically would 
I wouldn't, well, I can't give financial advice, but once you're over a certain point in your finances, I highly recommend a financial advisor, someone who actually has their authority on this topic and they're credible and you can tell them to automatically pull a certain amount of your out of your account. So for me, it's like if I can afford this luxurious thing, I have no business not affording to put money into my retirement plan or putting money into my um, what, stocks, like investment fund. Um, so to be honest, I have no knowledge of this financial stuff. And, and that's why people follow my ex-boyfriend. He teaches those things. I really don't have the knowledge in it. All I know is I have someone that I pay, that I trust, and they handle it for me and they know exactly what to pull out each month. And it's something I don't think about. It's just preparing for my future. Don't think about it. And I think that's a great place to start. The next thing that I would consider is asking yourself, does it, does it really matter to upgrade my home or does it really matter to travel? Like where's, where's your values at? So for me, in five years, I won't have to choose, but right now for security reasons, I'd rather make sure that I'm doing wise things with my money and not spending it all as I make it. So I choose travel over buying a house right now. And I think that's something to think about too. Um, the next thing is eat good, work out good, have a trainer, take care of yourself. Um, Make sure that you're investing in high quality groceries every week. Like those are the things that just feel good for me. Whenever I started and I didn't know, like when I started on my own and didn't know how I was gonna make it, the, there are two things that made me feel extremely wealthy. And I, I don't know why, it was just a little thing for me and it was because of the conditioning that I had around it from the X-Men in my life. So in the past, uh, when I was married, not with the ex-boyfriend, but when I was married, I couldn't go to the grocery store and spend more than $30. So I would spend it on like frozen pizza and some vegetables and some nuts. And I remember always wanting fresh berries and wanting pistachios. And I remember him coming home one night and getting really upset with me that I ate all the pistachios, but I'm a vegetarian, so it was like, I need, I need protein, like I was, I was really suffering. So now, not now, flashback a year ago, the first thing I did to make myself feel good and to put myself in the right mind space, like I can, I can manifest anything I want was investing in nice groceries and, and just trusting that the universe would provide. And it did. And it's these little steps you take of bravery of, oh, I can do this, I can do this. And for me, it was always having fresh berries, candles, and um, and pistachios. And I know that's silly, but for everyone, it's gonna be something different. Something that you can go back in your childhood and be like, what was the thing that I wanted? Yay, I love it. So technically, Jen, I'm a, a pescatarian, um, but, and I've even been experimenting with meat in the past two months because I've been dealing with mystery illness and I had been vegan for a while and then pescatarian and I don't know what's going on with my body. So I've been very open-minded, which has been a challenge for me and I've been changing so many things. But I love that you're a vegetarian, that's awesome. So I wanna ask you like, what is it for you from your childhood that someone told you no, you can't do that, you can't have that, you can't be that, you're not worthy of that. That is the thing that you need to go get. And I will tell you this, Thank you, Todd. Fresh berries, nuts, and candles. There's there's three things that those are. And let me grab a Kleenex here. I'm still getting over a cold. You know what that is? If you are just starting to make money, that is something that is disposable. That is something that you will consume and it will go away. And for a long time in my nervous system, that felt unsafe. It felt like if I ate all of this, well, when will I get more? Because of how I was conditioned. So I had to start with these very fundamental things like berries and nuts and consume them and feel the discomfort in my body that like the ex-husband created in me or I heard people say in my life like, oh, don't eat that all in one sitting. You gotta save more for later. No, that's just what you want. So you start conditioning yourself energetically for little things and you build up. That's if you're starting from the very bottom. For some of you here, you might be 10 steps ahead of me trying to level up even further. Maybe for you, it's like 
treating yourself to a new Chanel bag and feeling the abundance of that because you can and knowing that more will come. Everyone's in a different place and I'm somewhere between the berries and just getting a new Chanel bag whenever I want. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm getting close and I will be miles ahead from where I am now to where I am later in a year from now. So let that be encouraging to you. Um, and then the next thing that I would tell you, do's and don'ts of for making major money once you have over 10K, do's and don'ts. Do not try to grow your business all on your own. The most freedom and the most growth I've had has come from since I've, since I've hired. Um, right now it's been absolutely amazing to have a personal assistant and another two people on my team with my agency. It's been amazing to have help. Oh, I'm so proud of you, Manifesting Mind. Yes, what is your niche gonna be? So for everyone listening, I want you to be thinking, right now, I'm doing hot seat coaching for an hour. My regular rate is about 200 an hour. This is free hot seat coaching. If you have questions for your business, your social media, now is the time to put them in the, in the comments because I will be answering questions. So please, I'm, it's not selfish of you to ask. Please take the floor, give me some questions. I'm gonna go ahead and mark this one off the list. Let's see what was next. Okay, so Via here, you're talking about personal power. How do I elevate my personal power? Okay, personal power is believing in yourself. And this belief trickles down into every area of your life, whether that is your business, your sexuality, your relationships, your, the way you show up when you walk into a room, the way you work out, the way you dedicate your time. Your personal power is knowing your worth and walking in it. And it takes practice to get there. So let's see, I'm gonna go in here. Oh, okay, a good example of personal power and how I first started building it. So this morning, I obviously had a moment. For those of you just joining, welcome to the Personal Brand Power Hour. I'm your host, Sophia Spolino, and I'm so excited to help you build a profitable personal brand on social media. So I actually, a year ago, when I left the ex-boyfriend and didn't know how I was gonna make it on my own, I was already life coaching, I just wasn't advertising. I wasn't showing up with authority in my industry. So last year, I tightened up my belt and started really showing up as an authority. Now, we'll give credit to this. I had a coach work with me, and in one hour, Meryl Kriegsman made me believe in myself more than I had ever believed in myself. She asked me what I was charging, and she made me quadruple it on the spot with her in the hour. I put up my offer, and people started paying for it. And, it, and I knew, I knew that I was worth that, but like I didn't, I didn't know it until she said it. And then it all started to make sense. As I started taking on more clients, I realized how much energy it was taking and there was no way I could charge less than that and be profitable and like have a life and not take more than two clients or three clients in a day. That is a lot of energy plus creating content, blah, blah, blah. There's so much that goes into it. Like you have to remember, whatever you're building a personal brand online, regardless of what the actual work is that you're doing, in my opinion, you don't just batch create content. That's not coming from your heart. I would recommend that you're creating every day, that you're telling stories every day, that you're telling breakthrough moments you had with clients every day, that you're showing up alive, that you're creating fresh content, fresh, juicy content every day. But of course you wanna have stuff stocked up. But anyway, that was the difference for me. I did not know my, my worth, what I could truly see other people could see me charging. Okay, so I had that moment with her. Then I remember the first time I ever had a long-term client send me the money. Hi McCartney's, how are y'all? I remember the first time I had a client send me a huge, huge chunk of money. I had never seen that much money come into my account before in my life and I was just like, I do this every day. I'm a bad bitch life coach. This is normal for me because it was normal. I was helping women for three years or two years casually. I didn't realize what I was capable of. But that day when that, that wire hit my account, I was like, oh my God, like this is what I could do. 
And then to help a client, okay, so I'm with a client for that long, the transformation that that client gets to see, holy moly, this is like life changing because I get to see her change her life. Recently, that client realized she was a lesbian and has had an amazing year. So just just to let you know, um, it's, it's just been monumental to see like working with someone and just see the difference that it made for me to believe in myself. In that moment when I got that wire, I was in a very specific UPS parking lot, okay? I took a video of myself crying and I was like, I can do this. I can do this. And then this morning, after I get my profit loss statement from my bookkeeper and I saw what I made in 2022 and I cried all night long, I had to go to that same UPS parking lot because I just had a Mardi Gras ball and I think that spending money on a ball gown is a waste. So I rent my ball gowns most of the time. And, and this goes back to where I think it's smart to spend money and where I don't think it's smart to spend money. I think that's a waste. You wear it one time, you take a lot of pictures, you're never gonna wear that dress again. So I go to bring it back to UPS and I realize this morning, I'm gonna cry guys, I was in that same parking lot and I was like, turn up the Ariana Grande. You like my hair, G, thanks, just bought it. Like, you see it, I like it. I had a moment, I was like, I could take myself back to that moment. But I remember the tears in my eyes being like, I did it. I did it. And I just went and bought my car and I didn't know how I was gonna even like pay the payments, y'all. I had no idea. And in that moment, I felt so much relief a year ago. And now fast forward a year to today and I'm in the same parking lot. I happen to be wearing the same jacket. And I was like, oh my goodness. Like, Sky Daddy. Me and you, we doing something amazing. So I just wanna tell you where you are in a year from now to where you are in two years from now could be a huge difference. Over the past year, I've had monthly jumps where I 10 times my income and overall in the course of a year, I six times my income. You can do this. Let me get to some questions here. Did you start with a company or did you build your own? Um, I want to know what you mean by that, by manifesting mine. Do you mean, did I start with a company on like life coaching or did I, I have always built my own business. So I worked with my ex partners and built brands on the side, brands that people would never know that I've touched and I've written scripts. I've been the face of so many different brands and I did that, but that wasn't building my own personal brand. That was just me using the skills that I'm using here to work with other brands and write and edit and show up as their model for a while. But as far as building my own personal brand, yes, I do not work for anyone else and I work for myself. I did not launch my social media agency until about a month ago now. But I, it's something that I've been doing secretly behind the scenes for about the past seven, eight months. And that, that's been an incredible way to stabilize my income and take all the skills and knowledge that I've built building a personal brand and putting it out there for other people helping women. So the way my business model works is I can coach you to build your own personal brand and work for yourself and use social media and know exactly what you need to do or you can hire me in my agency and we will do it for you. So I've built literally a brand that teaches people how to do the thing, but if you don't wanna do the thing, then we'll do it for you. It's, it's great. Uh, by the way, the link to work with me, get coaching, see what my agency's all about, that's in the bio as well as my podcast, which is an absolutely free resource. It's got the same vibe as this. It's called Social Equity, and it's all about building equity using social media. Okay, let's see. Would I hire a social media marketer? Absolutely, I already have, and I would like to hire more as my team grows. Cheryl, um, I love hiring women. I love hiring, I'm assuming you are she, her pronouns. I love hiring queer women. I just see Cheryl, so let me know your pronouns, Cheryl, but if you are a woman, I, actually, if you're anything, equal equal opportunity here. 
Um, but I love, love, love that queer people are typically attracted to me and I'm really excited to have like a very gay team. But also I have someone on my team who's a completely straight woman and I love her to death. Is the best way to make money on social coaching? Seems like the influencer market is filled. Okay, so first of all, great question, Jen. Um, the influencer market is not filled. So influencer marketing is only going to get heavier because right now these platforms are shoveling ads. And the only way that people are going to stay on these platforms and not just watch ads are by seeing content creators that they truly enjoy their content and that they're not trying to just sell them something all the time. And right now, the influencer trend is working with one or two brands long term. That is it. So we can trust that you really like that brand. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but I love to share what I'm doing so that I can help you. So right now I only work with, I think one brand. I've, I really limited it down as I built my business. I work with Hello Wisp. No, technically I'm an affiliate for repurpose, but they don't pay me. Okay. But Hello Wisp. I, I'm like one of the phases of Hello Wisp. I absolutely align with it and I create content for them every single month. Um, I love it. I truly use every single one of their products aside from birth control because I'm a lesbian. So I highly recommend that if you are seeking going into the influencer niche, that you are not going into it thinking it's gonna be profitable right away. You've gotta build an audience and then you've gotta connect with a product you love and a product that is going to be something that people can subscribe to because those companies that have subscription-based services, they have so much income coming in that they can keep regular creators on and they're not trying to cut corners on you. So it's really important that you reach out to brands that have subscription-based products, services, and work with them because they're gonna treat you the best. I've been in this business for full-time since 2018. I can guarantee that that is the best way to go. And the influencer market is not filled. There is an influencer for everything. You do not have to coach on it, but you could be a hybrid. So for me, I love being a coach, but I still will always, I guess, be an influencer. At the end of the day, I wanna influence you to love yourself so much that you make more money, that you build a personal brand, that I can teach you social media, and that you take care of yourself. We all started here because of my relationship content and because I started talking about taking care of our bodies and understanding our bodies. So. I'm never gonna drop that part of myself. And I think in order to be a female entrepreneur, it's so important that you take care of yourself. Like you can't get stopped because like, I, I can't take a sick day. I mean, I, I can, but like I'm running a business. I'm building a team. I have to show up as a leader. I don't wanna be sick. So now it's so great that I have healthcare that I can recommend for people. And as an influencer, that's coming from my heart. So yeah, uh, influencer, Markets not filled. Pick the thing you want to influence in. Jen, tell me some things that you love. Also, coaching. Yes, you can make a lot of money coaching. You could coach on anything. You could coach on anything that is legal for you to coach on. It is a highly unregulated industry. What have you overcome in your life? Teach people. Charge for that. Okay? If I stayed in my DMs giving people free social media advice... I would be broke because I charge for the skill that I've harnessed and accomplished so much and have over 333,000 followers across platforms. I charge for that and I charge well. You can do this too. Anyone listening, I want you to think, what is the thing that just lights you the fudge up whenever you do it? Is it working out? Is it your skincare? Is it cooking? You can become an influencer or a coach for any of these things. Okay, let's go on to more questions. What is the website? Do we patent our name that is the start? Oh, like to build your business? Well, I, I go to, to Louisiana's website, like Go Biz is what we call it in Louisiana. But for you, it'd be looking up like your... 
I think Secretary of S Hold on. I'm going to look it up for you right now. I got my computer right here. Um, um Let's see. You're going to want to go to an actual .gov, not anything else. It's not necessary. Um I think you can go to sba.gov. Yes, sba.gov to register your business. That's S as in Sam, B as in Bill, A as in Apple.gov. And you're able to go ahead and register with the state. I will tell you this though. I kept my, my personal income separate from my business income before I even had an LLC. I just had different bank accounts so I could pay taxes properly. I don't think, if you're just starting, like don't get caught up. If you, you got a short, like tight budget, don't get caught up in this stuff yet. You, you make money and come back to this later. Unless you've got like a super niche thing where you need to copyright something or you need to trademark something, Start showing up online and earning revenue and then come back to these details. But yes, I highly recommend an LLC because that protects you as a individual. Um, yes, Social Equity Podcast is my podcast. Thank you. My username isn't showing. What do you mean? S Sophia Spolino. Just saw you did with them scrolling the other day. Oh, Yes. Yes, I just did an ad with Wisp. I love it. It's so fun. Everywhere I go, I feel like people go, you're the Wisp girl. And I'm like, yeah, I am. I love it. Okay. So next question. How much does it cost? I want to say registering for an LLC costs less than $300. I want to say even less than that. It could be closer to $100. I just can't remember. And you can do this yourself. When you Google how to start your LLC, there's gonna be so many businesses that try to like teach you how to do it and charge you for it, but you could just go to sba.gov, sba.gov. Secretary of State, thank you, Tony, yes. Because once you go to sba.gov, you can hit register with state agencies, and then that's gonna get you to what Tony's saying. Yes, Secretary of State, that's perfect. Um, okay. Let's see, love, okay, Jen loves giving, life advice, straight talk, also skincare. Okay, perfect, perfect. So here's the thing. If I didn't give life advice, relationship advice, I could never sell the skincare, right? If I didn't give life advice, relationship advice, I could never sell the, the, the reason you should trust me as your coach. So no matter what you do, Jen, if you love giving advice, showing up on social media is for you because that is what I get paid to do every day in some way, shape, or form. And then if you love skincare, I would highly recommend researching a subscript, excuse me, I have kombucha, okay? Freaking love kombucha, but it makes you burp a little bit. I keep burping. It's a thing. Okay. Um, Find a skincare subscription-based company and pitch them once you build up a little bit of a following because that's where you're going to see the most, not necessarily residual income, which you could with affiliate codes, but you will see that they keep you on as a creator much better than just a one-off brand that doesn't have the funding for it. Thank you, Linda, for putting the link in there. Yes, Cheryl says, don't get caught up in the taxes absolutely like don't be afraid of that for so long people told me like be afraid of making money because then like the taxes are gonna be so bad no make so much freaking money that you don't care that you're like you know what i i don't like paying tax i don't like handing off the money but you know what i like making money and so if the government wants money i'm just gonna make more of it my power is so freaking on fire in my body that i can literally Pick one thing I want to sell and sell it. And people are going to buy it because they love me. Because I know they love me. Because I know you guys love me. Because I know I would love you. Because I'm showing up in my personal power. You're going to show up in your personal power. And whatever I have to say with confidence. With a heart that is truly obsessed with the product or the thing or the service that I'm selling. Whatever it is. If I'm showing up for me and I know it in my bones. What I'm meant to be here sharing with you. 
you're going to know it too. And that is endless. Abundance is endless. There is no capping out on what you can do. Okay? Nothing. Okay, let's see. Your relationship is what made you relatable so many. Thank you, Cheryl. Yes. So I started out here with relationship content. Now, here is where I'm going to tell you I made a fatal flaw. And I don't want any of you guys to make it. I, there's nothing wrong with making silly, relatable content, especially if you are showing up and you know you want to be an influencer. But where you could actually interject value for people and let them know you actually have a brain is really important because one day you may want to show up as the authority of a certain product, right? You might get a, a, a have an opportunity for a brand deal and you want people to trust you on that product. I mean, I'm sure you guys hear it all the time. Influencers can't really sell their own products. They're not selling their own merch. There's really no profitability in that. Influencers don't really have that level of influence for products that people don't need. So if you get the opportunity to work with a company that has a product people need, if you want to have authority and be able to maintain a relationship with that company, you need people to be able to trust you. Until last year around this time, I wasn't truly building authority. And for those of you that don't know even further, me and my ex-girlfriend had the opportunity for a reality show, like our own show on TLC. And that's why my content got really crazy and like racy because I was doing whatever it took so I could get the lead on that show. So there was strategy behind it. But what I wish more than anything is that I took my personal brand seriously to show up as an authority much sooner. Because all of those entertainment things, they're possible. It can happen, but you are much more likely to build a personal brand and build a business from your social media than you are to just get discovered or get on a show. So like take yourself seriously much sooner than I did. Jen said she left an abusive relationship. That was fun. How do we all? And you know what? The best part is we all relate to it. And the best part is we still get ourselves into some shit even if we've done it before. And the best part of it is because you went through it, you can profit from it, Jen. You can create content about bad relationships. Guess who watches content about bad relationships? Divorcees with alimony who need to buy skincare. And honey, that's your business plan, okay? For me, my business plan, I had so much lesbian content. I love and am obsessed with women over 40. Like they're like, like, like I love it. I'm so attracted to them. So instead of, trying to do anything that crazy. I just pivoted my brain. It's like, I work with women over 40, not just because I'm attracted to them, but because I can communicate with them really well. And I love empowering them because I feel so many have never been empowered in their lives before. They've lived their lives for their family. They've lived their lives for the man building up, climbing up the corporate ladder. And now they're looking at someone like me who's 30 and going, well, how do I do this? How do I do this? Because now I'm retired or I'm just realizing that I want to do something for the first time in my life that I actually freaking want to do for me. And I love helping them do it. Like just two weeks ago, I helped a client. This was like the most amazing day. I helped her. She had a beautiful personal brand going. People can come in to work with me at any level. You could be a completely beginner. You could have an amazing, massive personal brand. And I help you even further. She was known as a very, very big influencer in the anti-aging world. And she was not, she had a barrier to entry to work with her for consulting. She had a barrier to entry to accept money. She didn't have a clear call to action of who she was talking to. So I went in and audited her account and now we're accepting payments. And one day I was able to start accepting payments for her online. Now here's the thing. You're like, that's easy, Sophia. You just set up some, no. It's not easy because if you want to set up a form for your clients to like really get tied in, feel like you want to know about them, how can you help them, linking your calendars, linking your Stripe, linking email marketing, there's so much that goes into this massive animal of building your personal brand and that's why it's amazing to have a coach that helps you tie all these things together because there's a lot. This is a huge elephant and we bite off one bite of the elephant every day together. Or in my case, a big stalk of broccoli because I wouldn't need an elephant. 
Okay, um, let's see. You're so dope, gonna schedule one-on-one. -on -one. Thanks, Jen, can't wait. Okay, so the way to work with me one-on-one. Hold on, I need a sip, I'm too excited. My best friend says I'm a helicopter. She's like, you get so excited, you just start yelling, and I feel like I do that right now. I'm like so passionate. Like just knowing that someone's eating this up right now and getting value and like feel like they could change their life gets me so excited. Okay. The way to work with me one-on-one -on -one is the link in my bio. Uh, you could book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call or you could jump all in and apply for my VIP program. I'm only accepting three women for that VIP program. It is working with me every single weekday for four weeks. And we have one scheduled call per week, but the rest of the time you just have access to me for voice memos, in the moment tutorials. And I have helped multiple women grow their business, blow up, see hundreds of thousands of views. I've done this at least I'm gonna underestimate, so I'm not like tooting my horn too much, but at least 20 times I have made women while working with me see like 500,000 views on their videos, okay? So just know that if you work with a coach, whether it's me or someone else, you're expediting your process and you're not getting stuck in the mud. I got stuck in the mud, so I'm teaching you. And I will be honest, there is no such thing as a social media expert that knows it all. What I know, I know because I've done it for years and because I do it every single day, not just for me, but for my clients. So when something doesn't work, I know it doesn't work and I implement that with all of my clients. Go learn from someone who's doing the thing or who has done the thing you wanna do. And that's where you're gonna get the value and that's where you're gonna grow fast. Okay, Cheryl says she left after 25 years and now she doesn't know what to do. Cheryl. Cheryl, talk to me. Um, what do you love? What did you love before a man told you like, no, that's weird, don't do that. Or you shouldn't spend your time on that. Or you shouldn't spend your money on that. What did Cheryl like? What did little Cheryl dream of being when she grew up? What made little Cheryl happy? I want you to think about that before someone told you not to be or that you couldn't be. What is it? Because I guarantee that you will find what you want to do. And when you find that purpose, everything's going to line up, Cheryl. Everything. You will find joy in your life again. You will know what to do. You already know what to do. It's inside of you. You've got to get quiet and you've got to start asking yourself hard questions. And I believe in you. And most of the time when people come to me for one-on-one -on -one social media coaching, it ends up being a life coaching call too. I'm a little bit of a hybrid. I'm never going to stop. Look, social media is strategy, but mindset is everything. And Cheryl, if you want to work with me, you know where the link is the book. I'd love to, to get on a one-on-one -on -one with you and get really clear about your purpose and get you happy and then start working on your personal brand with you. Yes, you do have to find yourself again and create this new you that doesn't rely on anyone else's approval or validation and you will find yourself again. Jen says, yes. Linda says she's 40. Yeah, we love it. Over 40, please come in. Okay, if you're enjoying this live, I may stay on here for slightly more than an hour if you guys keep sharing the live and keep saying you're getting value from it and that you're enjoying it. Invite friends right now, go, and I will stay longer. I'm so grateful that y'all have been here for this. Like, I'm looking at the clock and I'm like, it's been 45 minutes. This has been so fun. What the? Okay. Um, let's see. Beadwork art. I will contact you. Awesome. I would love to see your beadwork. I would love to see your art. Um, these are all products that you can sell online. I love when people say that they do art or beadwork or sculpting or something like that because no one can really compete with you on that. And I will get very clear with you on like having these rates that you probably could never see yourself charging for your art because for you, it was a hobby. It's something you love, something you're naturally good at. But guess what? People like me who can't do art need art for our house and we'll buy it. So I'd love to help you build a personal brand around your art and position you as an authority where people want to be there and pay for your work. Robert's here. My ex-boyfriend just came on. Hi, Robbie. Okay, 
Todd says she's 49, never found herself. Look, all of the women I know who are over 40 are really struggling and it's not your fault. It's because of your generation. It was what you were taught. It was this limiting belief system. It was being taught that you weren't worthy of making a lot of money. You are taught. Um, if if uh, you want any further resources for this before you would do a coaching call, my podcast is called Social Equity and it is an absolutely free resource for you. I post a new episode every Monday morning so you get hyped up for the week because guess what? Monday is my favorite day of the week. Like it's just mm, getting all that good juju going and energy going and, and knowing that this week something magical is going to happen for you. Um, okay. Yes. Robert is here. Hello, Robert. If you're interested in going live with me, let me know and I will add you or if you, dude, if you'd want to go live on yours and I join, I would like die a happy death. So Robert had two little social media lessons with me and has recently blown up. I think he's at 800,000 followers. He grew 750,000 followers in the past month. 750,000 followers in the past month. Wrap your head around that. Robert's going to forever get to do what he loves and really never work a day in his life to be making crazy amounts of income because of that social media growth, because of that social equity, because he's now building a personal brand that people know and love him for. When people land on his page, they know what they're gonna see, they know what they're gonna learn, they know what they're gonna hear, and that's the secret to it. Okay, so the question that I, let's see, was gonna go to next, let me find it, find it, oh, okay. How to elevate your personal power, part two. Surround yourself with people who are ahead of you. Coaches, friends, friends who inspire you. I didn't know what I could charge until I had friends who could inspire me and push me to level up and go, girl, you could charge so much more for that. You can make that your business. Like, I didn't know, I didn't see it in me. I needed someone else to see it in me. Surround yourself with people who see the power in you, who put their hand on your heart and go, you can do this. You can do this. Those are the friends you want in your life. Okay, um, and then ask God. Ask God for more. That will elevate your personal power right there. Ask God and believe he will deliver. Two, ask for a raise wherever you're at or ask for more responsibility. If you can't get a raise at the moment, ask for more responsibility, prove your worth, and you will step into that personal power because you will level up and you'll put on your big girl pants and show up differently in your career. What is the best social channel to be on profitability wise? This is a great question, Jen. Okay, let me blow my little sticky nose. Take a sip. Okay, so I love my beverages. Let me show you guys what I have. I have lavender kombucha with berries, coffee with oat milk, in a handmade lavender cup that was given to me by my best friend in college at the time who is now out as a lesbian and we were both little Christian girls, so funny. And um, water with a straw, of course. Okay, who else needs like three different drinks? I need water, I need some sort of gut health drink, and then I need coffee. And I need it all at the same time, always. So is there anyone else like me out there or is it just me? Okay, Jen, let's go for it. What is the best social channel to be on profitability wise? You're in the right place. Welcome to the Personal Brand Power Hour. For those of you just popping in, share this live with a friend. Share it now. Let people know that you're here. Let's see. Um, let me, oh, I don't know. I just, oh, there we go. I was tapping comments and got mixed up. Let people know that you're here and that you're enjoying it. Share the live and I will stay on a little bit longer than the hour. So how do you know? How do you know which is the best one profitability wise? I'm probably gonna tell you something you don't wanna hear. Ugh. You need to be creating a lot more content and putting it on every platform than you think is necessary to be seen right now, to start, to start, to build your personal brand. Right now, I could probably post one time a day on each platform, that's fine, I have my audience, whatever. But TikTok's algorithms change and TikTok's algorithm still doesn't know that I'm a social media coach. So I'm not really thrown into the lesbian algorithm. I'm just kind of floating in the air until I get pivoted in. 
to start, I think people need to be posting three TikToks a day just to get some credibility or at least one really good TikTok every single day. The next thing would be to also be working on your Instagram and repurposing those TikToks as a reels and showing up in Instagram stories and creating actual posts. Right now, there's been news out that Instagram is actually going to be favoring photos again. If you wanna be seen as an authority, as a coach or teaching on something, I highly recommend carousel posts. And I do recommend having your Instagram post to your personal Facebook page, not your business Facebook page. I recommend using repurpose.io. There's a link in my bio for you to get 20% off. I don't get paid by them to say it. I get a kickback, but I don't get like, Pages just to talk about it. I've used repurpose.o for three years and it's amazing because it takes my Instagrams and it puts them on LinkedIn, puts them on Facebook business page, puts them on YouTube shorts, and then I post natively in Instagram and TikTok. Now, I know you're like, Sophia, this didn't answer my question. Like, what's the best channel to be on? Let me explain. To be profitable, you can't just be on Instagram and expect all your new following to come from Instagram. So the way I see it is you need to have TikTok and YouTube and Instagram all working to grow your audience if you're just getting started. But specifically TikTok is a great way to just have that viral moment from the gods and then funnel those people over to Instagram. So hear me out. You start posting on TikTok daily. One video a day, high, high, high quality, or a few more if you can. That audience, your biggest call to action for them is to follow you for more on Instagram and that if they watch your Instagram stories, there's something good over there. So when you do this, you're just taking the audience and you're, you're pivoting them to another platform. The reason it's so important to get people over here to go there is because the camera app, I realize I'm not supposed to be saying it out loud. Um, other platforms, I'm not sure if that is something that the algorithm here doesn't like. But we're going to call this the ticker talkers and the camera app, okay? Camera app, um, the 2B app, and the Phoebe app. Okay, we'll go with that, okay? You get them to go over to the camera app and... In the camera app, you can sell. So Jen, where have you been talking to me? Where have we been communicating about how I could work with you? I am using the camera app to talk to the audience that is ready to talk to me. That goes, Sophia, I've seen your content. I know you can help me. You trust me. We're actually talking in the DMs and I sell through the DMs, right? So no matter what you're doing, you're building a closer relationship because people on the camera app love to watch stories. And that's really, really intimate, right? Like people who saw my story last night got to see it before people on Instagram this morning, oh, camera app this morning, got to see me crying in real time when I got my profit loss statement. That is a very intimate thing that was shared in an Instagram story. God, I can't stop saying it. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's all working together. And I repurpose everything to the Tubi app and everything to the Phoebe app as well. But I create natively in both apps. And TikTok is primarily lead generation. And the camera app is nurturing and selling. Does that make sense? You kind of need, just like you need three drinks, you need lots of social media. Now, if you work with someone like me, I will be able to help you just gather, like you won't feel overwhelmed, like I gotta do this, 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 this. No, we will be able to talk about how to strategically repurpose all of your content across apps and what things from TikTok will go where. And it's not, it's a lot, but you won't be overwhelmed if you have someone helping you with it. Yes, coffee, coconut water, water. I love it. Russian, hey, Russian River Frenchies. Do we have an appointment tomorrow? Is that you on my calendar? I know I read the notes, but I, I think you didn't put your handle in it. So I didn't know if I was associating it with you or not, but I think it is. 
Okay. Rachel says, do the algorithm from videos you watch or like affect the types you show up on? Or are they separate? Hmm. Amazing question, Rachel. In fact, a question that I'm struggling with right now because I'm stuck in lesbian TikTok and I want to be because they're so hot, but I need to be on only coaching TikTok. I need to be liking videos that are about my niche. I actually need to unfollow people. I don't want to do it. I don't want to hurt their feelings. But the only thing I like more than feelings is money. <laughs> so eventually I'm going to have to do it, right? So yes, sadly, it does affect where you're going to land on the app. And actually that's really good encouragement for me to go through and unfollow people and be brave enough to do that. And um, like stop liking things, even if I like it, even if they're my friends, just stop liking it because it's not within my niche or I'm not learning from it. So that is something that I need to take more seriously. And the reason why the TikTok app is magical and why it's always giving us things we want to see is because it's showing us what we like. Not just what we like, what we actually watch, what we watch through and through. So it's very important that you're only liking the things that are in your type of content. And it's very important that you're only following people in your type of content. And you can create what I, what my coach calls a burner TikTok account and just use it for fun, which is something I need to start doing. So I'm glad you asked that. It really reminded me that I got to get clear with that. Thanks, Sophia. This is really helpful stuff. Yay, Anastasia. Okay, please, if you're enjoying this live, go ahead and share it with a friend. You can hit that little share button, share the live, let people know you're enjoying it. Just so you guys know, if anyone's just coming in late, this is the Personal Brand Power Hour. I am teaching women to build a profitable personal brand online. I host a podcast called Social Equity. And if you love the energy here, you're going to love the energy on the podcast where I encourage you guys every Monday at four in the morning, the podcast drops. So there was a new episode today. I hope you listened to it. Also, I wrote a book on manifestation. It's called How to Get What You Want. You can apply it to anything. You can apply it to your business, your relationships, anything. I read so many books on manifestation and it was so annoying to like be like, this is like a lot of fluff. And then I just needed like the meat of this. Like I just needed like the how to. My book breaks it down into 11 pages. It's absolutely free. All you have to do is sign up for my email list. It's linked in my bio. Go get how to get what you want. It's, it's such an easy read. I want you to take out your journal and you will grow so much from it. Oh my gosh, yes, I should make a second account to watch. I love it. Okay. Let me go ahead and answer one more question because we're coming up on the end of our hour. Okay. If you were starting from square one, what would you, if, if I were starting from square one, what would I do? Okay. Hi, Kaylee. Okay. If you were starting from square one on social media, what would you do? What would you do? What would I do different is really how I want to answer this question because I feel I made so many mistakes. And in this one year that I've taken myself seriously, I've made more money than I ever dreamed of in my life. So let's help you not make those mistakes, shall we? I get very clear on my gift. Like, what are you really freaking good at? Like, what is it? What's your magic? What do people like your friends come to you for? What do people go, oh my God, like, thank you. When you, when you share something with them or you help them. Hey, Terry. Hey, Kaylee. What is it? We all have a different gift. For those of you who don't know, I am like very inner spiritual, but I totally believe in God. And it's like God puts something magical in all of us. Something we are all good at. Something that we all just naturally love. You may love, like, love shopping and love styling people. Guess what? I went to fashion school and I still couldn't dress my friends. I still have my best friend come dress me when I have an important date, right? So I think it's very important to go, what do you love? And how could you share it on the internet? And know that when you share it on the internet, you can make money from the brands as an influencer or you can make money as a coach teaching it. The sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. There's nothing you can't do if you're doing something you love. Okay? So I will get clear on my gift and whatever you've had experience in. So maybe you don't love that you've been through some bad things in life, but you love helping people and you love sharing those stories. 
and sharing your heart to help, that experience you can sell. You can monetize the shit you've been through. How cool is that? Like, I literally monetize the fact that I went through religious trauma. The fact that I went through something that didn't let me realize who I was at an earlier age. I shared that. Very vulnerable. Social media limit. Ugh, okay. Is everybody still there? Can you tell me you're here? Drop an emoji in the chat. Let me know you're still here. Tell me you're here. Tell me you're enjoying it and I'll keep going. Yes, Jen. Okay. Invite some friends, guys. Invite some friends. Keep this party going because I will stay as long as people are on for a while. I do probably need to get with my assistant in a, a minute and we've got to finish up some client work. So I do have a business to run and I usually run it till midnight because I love working at night. I'm like super creative at night. So I found people to work with me at night. Okay. Love that y'all are liking this. Keep sharing it. Keep hearting it. All the things. I love y'all. I'll continue. So be very clear on what your gift is. If you are starting from square one, not having a personal brand, figure out what your friends go, come to you for advice for. So if your friends come to you because you're the fit one, start selling yourself as the most fit, most empowered, most healthy woman on the internet. Show up like that. Show up like you're the freaking boss. Even if you have three followers, your mama, your auntie, and your dog, okay? Show up like that. Show up like that and people will believe you if you start to believe yourself. And then it's just going to snowball, okay? If you if you start creating content, but you're showing up as the authority in a specific niche, when something goes viral, because it will, sister, especially if you get a coach who can tell you how to do it, you will go viral. And when you go viral, you'll be so glad that you had other things that you thought nobody was looking at. You thought your mama, your dog, and your auntie were looking at it. Well, guess what? When you happen to go viral, all those videos that you thought nobody was watching, the internet's going to be looking. They're going to be like, do I want to follow? Sorry, I'm writing. LOL, I'm pretending this is my phone. Do I really want to follow this person? I love her viral video, but do I want to follow her? Let me look. And guess what? They're going to see all of those amazing videos that you made, and that's why they're going to follow you. Okay, Robert's here. I'm going to invite him. I don't know if he can, but we're going to try. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, my God. The man here. Not that we need a man. What's up? But we love him. Can anyone see Robert? I can't see Robert. I'm coming. Slow down. Wait, how do you have the video off, but you're still there? What do you mean? I'm on now. Oh, no, I can't see you. Can everyone? Oh, there he is. Oh, I love the hoodie. Hey. What does it say? Oh, it's Nike. Okay. I love yeah. it. Yeah, I just got nice. out of the hot tub. I just got out of the hot nice. tub. Bear with me. What's happening? What are you guys talking about? Session. Wait, I literally was... Today, oh wait, I, I'm just gonna play it. I'm gonna play it, but only a second because of copyright, you know. Well, but no. I, I what are listening. you? What are you playing? I was listening to this while getting ready for the live, and I thought of you so hard. What did I walk into? Oh my god. <laughs> yes. That's a hey, that's a vibe right there. It is. I wish I could play more, but I don't want to get in trouble for copyright. But anyway, don't get in trouble. What are you no. guys talking about? Okay, so we're talking about building your personal brand. What's the first thing you would do from square one? And so I'm I'm teaching people if they want to be an influencer or they want to be a coach, right? These are the two options on the internet, other than like having a an actual service that they provide or having an actual product they sell. You can show up as, as a leader in your industry, as an influencer or as a coach for that specific niche. And so I was saying, you need to get clear on your gift, realizing you can sell from your personal experience. And I would also advise to start on TikTok and build on IG, taking your TikTok con content and repurposing it, um, but starting on TikTok and then nurturing that audience on IG. Do you want to throw something in? 
Yeah, I mean, I'm actually doing a TikTok on that tomorrow. Um, and it's really just breaks it down into the three things people need to figure out because so many people that I talk to on a daily basis are just lost on where to go with their um, with their uh, personal brand strategies on TikTok and Instagram. Yeah. And it really just kind of comes down to either like three categories. Are you funny? What is your gift? If your gift is that you're funny and comedic, then you should go all in on that. If your gift is motivation and inspiring, that's a good one as well, because that's a very big category. And then number three is kind of the teaching category of how you can bring value to people by teaching in your content, which is what I do. That's what resonates with me the best. So I think it's really more simple than people think if they just think who they are as a person and break it down into whatever category and go all in on that category. Okay, and before you came in, I totally agree with you, but I was thinking, I was telling them like, what do your friends call you for? And like for you, it's, I mean, I couldn't tell you guys how many calls this man would get a day for really big baller financial advice, but also like my lighting's crazy. Hold on. I don't know what happened. Like since you came in, I feel like it's too bright. Okay. Um, for really big financial advice, but also just like really basic financial advice, people felt like they could trust you. And it's interesting because now that's like what you are known for. Like literally I can see people in here going, is he the, is he the uh, investment guy? Well, before he was the investment guy, he was my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> and he was the silly bands guy. Oh, silly bands is here guys. Okay. Yes. I've, I've always been known as the investment guy or the business guy. Then I was the silly bands guy for a very long time, which I still am. But yesterday was the first time I got stopped in public and these girls said, that's the TikTok guy. And I was ah! like, oh, no. Yeah. Well, I mean, together, sometimes we would get like, you're the TikTok people. But yeah. Yeah, for but sure. But that was like 2020. Like, it was it was a different world. <laughs> no one was he on He needs TikTok to give yet. a shout out to my daughter, Scarlett. Hi, Scarlett. Oh, so sweet. Watching from the Philippines, from Alabama. Hi, guys. If you're enjoying this live, go ahead and share it with a friend right now. Heart it. Boost us up there. Okay. So welcome to Personal Brand Power Hour. This was supposed to be just an hour, but we're continuing on. Let me Apparently. get something to drink. Keep talking. Okay. Grab one. Uh, just make sure if it's anything that's an adult thing that you do not say that. It, it won't be an adult thing. Okay, cool. I'm having kombucha, coffee, and water right now. I'm oh, have... I'm so glad you brought so many Silly Bands. So Silly Bands is one of the brands that I helped bring back, and I'm really proud of it. Okay, I'm back. Thank okay, you. Okay, he's back. Okay, so one of the other questions that I got today to answer was what podcast equipment do I use? And so I think it would be really good to talk about equipment together because we both have been going back and forth about equipment. But let's start with podcasts. So if you're building a personal brand – and you're like, I, I want to start a podcast. I want this to be high quality, but I also don't want to go in and invest something crazy into a mic. I highly recommend the Blue Yeti. So right now, guys, if you go to the link in my bio and you sign up for my email list, it's like get my free ebook, how to get what you want. When you sign up for that email list, you're going to get all of my favorite tools for social media. The mics I use, the lights I use, the podcast mic I use, the lighting that's literally right here right now. You're going to see links for all that. It's going to be delivered to your inbox immediately. Go sign up for my email list. Um, but I, uh, to give you brands, highly recommend Blue Yeti mic if you want something professional. Right now, at this stage of my brand, I spent years having like a professionally mic podcast and showing up uh, in the last six months of my podcast with high resolution video on YouTube. And I really didn't think that that affected my listenership. It can if you're starting with your podcast being a visual thing, but my current subscribers didn't care. Right now, Robert actually recommended me this little, it, it's like a selfie stick. <laughs> uh, I wish I could show you, but it, it's holding my camera. I can show down. mine. Oh yeah, show yours. Yes, that'd be great. So what's amazing about this little stick, it's called a Loom Cube. We're not paid by them or anything. God, I wish I was. Um, how cute is that? That's it. I, I, will be, I will be paid by them next week. Oh, really? Yeah, so this is the setup. I'm so jealous. Can you put a word in for me? Yeah, so this is the setup, guys. It's a small tripod, but it has the clip for the phone, but it also has this awesome light and awesome mic. 
So this is the secret sauce behind the stuff we do. Yes. So the mic that he's talking about is amazing. And I will say I have like the fancy podcasting mic, but right now I'm really loving that when I feel inspired, even if I'm traveling, I can just plug in this Loom Cube mic and it's decent enough quality for the podcast. 100%. Yes. Okay. So let's see. We've got some questions. Oh, we've got a salon owner for 12 years in here. We have someone who wants to learn about brand. Awesome. 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 Are you showing up online with your face? I'm curious, as a salon owner, are you showing up on your social media using your face or is it more about just you're showing your customers? Let me know. And Jen says she brought the Loom Cube today. Yay! Um, Bato, Bato Trading Academy, day trade stops. Yeah, that's not a good idea for anyone that's not trained in day trading. Don't listen oh, to I that. Oh, I think he's training people, though. I think he's a coach in that. Gotcha. Well, if he's a coach, good job. Robert yes. is so hot. That's Thank you, Kyle. Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So both on Google, Facebook, and TikTok. Awesome. Are you using your face, though, Marcy? Are you showing up, like, talking to your clients rather than just posting pictures of your client's hair? I'm assuming salon hair. Um Okay, Jen says, so for the long run, it's not as best to be silly on social, be an authority. So it depends. Like Robert just said, if you are talented as a comedian. Whoa, what just happened? Oh, I got a gift. It just put like a mustache on me. I was like, what? I literally am saying, don't be silly. And the mustache pops on my face. Like, what's happening right now? Um, so I think there's a time and place for people. So I just saw one of my favorite creators. God, I wish I could remember her name. What are you doing? Huh? You're crazy. I'm playing with one of the new products. Oh, my God. Have you ever seen one of these? No, what is it? This is a fan for to get flies away from your food in restaurants and picnics and patios. And it's just got rubber blades, so it keeps the flies away, but it can't hurt anyone. Oh, I love that. I love yeah. that. Anyway, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, you're I good, got you're distracted. Good. Right. So I was I was showing I, I was looking at this influencer the other day and she posted a video. So she's co comedy on TikTok. She's this gorgeous, like redhead model looking girl. And all of her content makes me laugh and it shows up on my for you page all the time. She posted a video saying a year ago how she was in a bad relationship and how her boyfriend said if she made videos, no one would watch them. And now she's over a million subscribers on YouTube and just two months of doing YouTube because of her TikTok, because of her TikTok, because she believed in herself, because she believed in her personal brand. Her personal brand is complete silliness, but she's a co comedian. So if you're confident in your comedy skills and you love entertaining people, I'm not saying not to entertain, but then show up as the authority at entertainment and don't depend on trending sounds to get there. Show up as the authority in entertainment. Yeah, um, and that really goes back. Can I can I touch on that? Yeah, go ahead. That really just goes back to one key critical thing that I know I talk about a lot, but I'll talk about it again. Yeah. Is that you really are one decision, one video, one meeting, one connection away from a totally different life. It is so true. And so many people in my DMs and people I talk to and people I consult for they all are ready to give up and they don't know where they're at and what to do. And it really just comes down to if you believe it in your heart, you believe it in your gut, you got to stick with it. You can't listen to other people that aren't going where you're going because you never know what's going to happen. You if really they can't. have not outdone you in life, if they have not had a better relationship and better money than you, because that's the only two things that matter is like your personal finances and your personal relationships. If they don't have better than you in any of those ways and not better because it's better by association. Like they were born into it or they married into it. If they're not making more money or they don't have better relationships than you do not take advice from them. Listen to yourself. Follow That's your right. Heart. Believe in what's in here because God put this amazing purpose in you. And when you start walking in your purpose, God, that language sounds so Christian and like, I don't know, but, but when you're walking in your purpose, like, in the thing you're meant to do, it will be so natural for you to make money from it. And the thing that's interesting is you'll feel at first 
that you shouldn't be making money from it because it feels too easy for you. Like Robert, going viral for these videos or helping people with consulting, what you're doing feels so natural for you, right? Like it doesn't even feel like it's work. Yeah, because the main thing for me and everything that I'm doing now with my personal branding and on TikTok and Instagram is because I see this massive proliferation of content where everyone is just taking from Google or other people's content and they're regurgitating it in a different way and they're not speaking from experience. And I think what people need is bite-sized advice when it comes to business and finance and money they need bite-sized chunks that seems doable, that seems actionable. If somebody gets on there with all these crazy charts and all this stuff and all this information, people just get lost in it. So what I'm trying to do is just give actionable advice that comes from my experience and my heart of 35 years of being in business yeah. and making millions and losing millions. And I just think it helps people because it feels more attainable. That's the key. Okay, so let's apply this back to our friend who has the salon for 12 years. How can you show up and share bite-sized things with your audience that are valuable in your niche? Why they would be like, oh, she genuinely cares about me. She's actually sharing tips beyond just like, these are the haircuts that I've done recently. Like, what are some hair care tips? Like, people like me have lost so much hair from COVID. How can you encourage us? Like, there's so many ways to show up and give people advice and hope in your niche. And then they're going to trust you. Then they're going to come to you. Then they're going to buy from you. Because we buy from people we like, we know, we trust. And if you're not showing up for your business with a personal brand, with your face, how do people know? If I didn't post the video that I posted last night that was so vulnerable, every now and then sharing something that's very real, why would people want to work with me? It's like I'm just another person on the internet that they could pay. No, you got to connect with somebody. So it takes putting yourself out there and it takes like being a little vulnerable sometimes, which by the way, Robert, did you see the video? I have it was to good. tell you the specifics when we get off the call, but I met my we will. I let, met let, my me touch, let, let me touch on that for a second, Sophia. Um, yeah. So right now I'm working with a very prominent actress and she's beautiful and she's talented and she's done a lot of great movies but her content does not show who she is. Literally, it's just beautiful pictures with whatever a trending sound is. She doesn't ever speak into the camera. She doesn't talk to her audience. And I said to her, I said, the number one thing is, is I see you, but I don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. And so what I told her is I said, look, you gotta throw all that away, tell stories, get ready with me, show them on set when you're going on set, show them when you're walking into your audition. You gotta show people who you are that's what I've done. And that's what has helped me grow so much is telling stories based on who I am, not what I think people want to hear. I love that. It's such good advice. And also the thing for her, the hardest part I would imagine without even knowing her to implement this is her taking the camera out in front of other people when she's in her real life, when she's in auditions, because being in that world where like everyone's looking at you or like for me being in a small town, it's nerve wracking to take my camera out and shoot a video like outside, but I do it. That's how do you think? Up. How do you think I feel being a fifty-some-year-old man out there filming, and people are like, "What is that guy doing?" Jesus! Little do they know you're about to be busting like mega bucks just from TikTok as an income stream. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll probably hit a million followers by next weekend. Oh, Bizarre. Congratulations. Wow. Thank you. Congratulations. And can, can you just like give a little shout out of who helps you? Like you run your scripts by who? That's right. You are very, you are very good at what you do. So if anyone needs personal branding, it's her. If it's, Thank you, if, it's if it's company marketing, it's us. Yes. Okay. So just so you guys know, uh, me and Robert don't work together. We're just good friends. We dated for a while. If you need like help with your social media for your product, Robert's the guy to go to. And I specialize in personal brands for women over 40, like building your brand so you never have to work a regular job again. Or maybe you built a brand, you've got to a plateau, you maybe you're like at 100,000 followers and you just need help getting to the next level. Hi, attorney Barnes, nice to see you. If you need help getting to the next level, 
That's what I do too. You can come and work with me at any level, just like with Robert. He's an angel investor. You can come in with a product that doesn't have any legs on it and show it to him and pitch it to him. But you can also come to him with a product that like is just stuck and he'll be able to help you with it. That's a good way to put it. Yes. Yes. I know. I'm good at putting things. (laughs) Okay. Let's see. Robert, can you help women with finances? Stay at home. Mom needs help. Wanting to divorce. Ooh, yes, I. We love I told healthy her to, women who I want told to her divorce. To DM me, you can take the divorce part. Okay, so first of all, when you divorce, Jen, are you into women? No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so um, Jen, at personal, Robbie, do you want to give her any advice, like some first steps? Yes, but you take mom? it first. What is it? You take it first. Okay, I'm gonna take it first. So. I want to encourage you to be building like a hidden fund somewhere, like somewhere. Ask your friend to open a safety deposit box in their name. If you open a safety deposit box in your name, when you get a divorce, you will have to split. So ask a friend to open a safety deposit box in your name and you start stashing shit in it. I mean, like if your husband's giving you like a Rolex, go put the Rolex in there. If you've got nice jewelry, put it in there. If you've got cash, start getting cash back. So when you go to the grocery store, get cash back. You stole my story. Let me touch on that. Wait, no. I learned this from my ex-girlfriend. No. So there's a famous story about this. A woman was unhappy in her marriage, and she wanted to be prepared for the inevitable divorce. So every time she went to the store, she got $20 cash back because she knew her husband didn't watch the bills yeah. yep. and and she put it in a separate account that he knew nothing about. And by the yeah, time, but, the divorce, but a lawyer could make you split that account. So yeah, you get a could. friend with a safety deposit box and every week you go put that money in there. But, but to talk about the Rolex side of it, I'm talking right now with two women that I'm helping with their businesses and both of them, when their husbands knew that they were going to divorce the women, the husbands took back the shoes, the bags, the watches, and the jewelry, which Is that obviously. Legal? Well, I know I'm not a lawyer and neither are you, but it's illegal, but it doesn't matter. They take it, Connie they Martin sell it. Speak up. They take it, they sell it, and they do whatever. And it's just so wrong and disgusting of me that people would do that. But yes, look out for yourself. Okay, I love this. Someone just asked, Oh my God, you're funny. Are you into women? So, women. I actually left him when I realized I was a lesbian. We were together. We're still like great best friends, but yeah. So just so you guys know. Okay, let's see. I tell my clients the grocery store one. Awesome. Love it. Um, Q, are you a lawyer? Uh, give us give us some more in the comments. Give us some more ideas for women wanting a divorce in the comments because yes. there's only so much that we know. And Josh, so we were together for three and a half years. Yes. And it was a great three and a half years. We're still together in spirit, just not in bed. <laughs> okay. Um, so, oh, wow. Someone just said uh, she had $7,000 in cash box at $100. Yes. Yes, queen. That's that's amazing. Um, wait a second. I'm a nurse and interested to start a supplement line. How can I start? Latoya, um... DM me on Instagram because it's just easier because on TikTok, I can't keep up. Um, DM me on Instagram and I'll talk you through. And I have a couple companies that white label supplements. Yes. Also, if for some reason he can't help you, I, I know how to do that stuff too. Not the white labeling part, but I know someone in that industry if you need further support. Um, Kaylee says, I've always struggled to find my niche. Robbie, you remember Kaylee? She was the one with that really good Chloe perfume. And ever since I smelled it, like I had to start wearing it too. And she was like at Halloween. She's like really pretty. I remember her. So Kaylee says she always struggled to find her niche. She's been stuck at that first step for years. Kaylee, what do your friends come to you for? Like, what do your friends call you for? What do they tell you, Kaylee, you're really good at? Okay, let me just go with this. Like, so simple. I just talked about how I know you iconically from the perfume. Literally, there's there's perfume influencers that just smell perfume. My best friend Erica, like best online friend Erica, is a perfume influencer. You could review. You could just review perfumes and give your take on it. Yes, 
And then eventually my advice as a perfume influencer would be to find a brand that does a subscription based model for their customers because they are going to have the, the money coming in every year, every month to be able to give you a steady influencer creator position. And those are the brands you want to work with. Find a perfume subscription brand and work with them. Uh, best website company, I would say easiest for a beginner. That is the best would be Shopify. You can do Wix, but I don't recommend using Wix. Um, and how I do actually I start think my... Squarespace has been really good for me, but I'm not storefront. Right, right. Um, it depends what you're building it for. What are you building it for? Is Robert straighter by Robert? Do you want to answer that? <laughs> I mean, I'm straight as long. Straight, straight you wouldn't, anymore. you wouldn't think, you wouldn't think my by my DMs, but yes, I'm straight fully. Oh, I know all the gay guys love him, and also what I loved about you, especially, you know, coming out and like Robert always knew since since day one. I before we even met, like I identified as bi to you, which now I realize I'm just a lesbian. But uh, Robert's always been a very big ally. Like that is not a pretend thing. That is not pretend. For the internet, like he is a straight white man who supports gay people like nobody else that I've ever seen in my life. And it makes me so happy. And it's just like this integrity that is behind the scenes. And I, I love to see it. Like I've never seen you ever make fun of a flamboyant man. And every other man over 40, like will do like a little like eh, thing whenever gay guys are around. You're like, you've never made one Actually, towards any human being, towards any I, human I being, am, I am I am pure to the core that I want people to win, and I just want to put good in the world. It you is know, so grew, freaking rare, man. For a I man grew up or... with a very I grew up in a very hard situation where I could have went the wrong way many, many, many times. Yeah, and now that I have had a very blessed, successful life. I'm all about giving back and doing what I can do. How do you pitch a subscription brand? Um, okay. That's that's too broad, Jen. Jen, um, maybe DM Sophia and I. And I yeah, can, Jen. Uh, this is gonna. This will. That will be a definitely a coaching time because Jen's gonna come on with me one on one. But I will tell you that I can help you build out your pitches, and then eventually I have like this really good way to pitch brands that I. Kind of want to keep that secret sauce for one-on-one -on -one clients. So hit me up and we'll go from there. Linda, I would say between Sophia and I, I would say if it's a store where you're going to be selling things, then I would say Shopify. Um, Sophia said Squarespace, but those are both really good. Yeah, I love Squarespace. It's very simple. It's very minimal. That's what I'm using right now. Okay, what... Not related, but what's the best way to market your business on social media? Absolutely, totally related. This is Personal Brand Power Hour. I'm so glad you're here. And we're talking about branding yourself and using your face in your brand. No matter what your brand is, whether you sell products, whether you're a service provider, whether you're a coach, it's so important. So the first thing I would say is get on social media. Do not be afraid of it and start creating organic content content that helps people, content that inspires people, content that shows how to use your product or service or how other people are using it, and then reviews. Like lots of authority. Like look at what my client did, whether that's showing them the hair that you're, you did beautifully on your client or that's how, for me, I could say, because of me, this client got 200,000 views on TikTok today. How cool is that? So just constantly talking about what you do and then the second thing I would do is tell your story. So, okay, let's go back to the hairdresser piece. How you realize you were meant to be a hairdresser and why you take so much pride in what you're doing and why you love it and how it was your dream since you were a kid. Telling your story. Telling the story of how a client came in and maybe she had her hairdresser cancel on her on the day of her wedding and you saved the day and she felt beautiful as a bride on her wedding day. Telling those stories no matter what your niche is, is going to be the way that people love, trust you, connect with you, and want to buy from you whenever they have the opportunity to buy from you. They might not buy now. They might follow for a while, but they will later. So telling your story and just sharing a lot of content and then using 
multiple platforms at once. If you go sign up for the link in my bio to get on my email list, you should do this. You're going to get my free ebook, How to Get What You Want, as well as a list of all the social media tools I use. One of those is a repurposing platform. I have a 20% off coupon code in there, which is crazy. I don't see them throwing that out to other influencers. I'm really blessed that they gave that to me because I've used this program for three years. Repurpose your content everywhere. There's no like market on Facebook, market on Instagram, P push yourself everywhere. Okay, Robert, they're asking, how can you tell us to protect our biz ideas? I know you have really good opinions on this. So how can, how can we protect our biz ideas? Um, that's a pretty broad question, but I'm going to give you guys several takes. Okay. Um, number one, if you have a biz idea and you're looking for a manufacturer, whether it be on Alibaba or in the States or anywhere else, um, have a manufacturer's agreement and an NDA with them and an NDNA with them. So then that way, before you share, you're fully protected. That's, that's number one. Right. Number two, you want to make sure to do your own research first before you launch a product or an idea to make sure that it's not oversaturated because a lot of people get so excited they forget the research step because you might have an idea that you think is new and there's already 15 other people doing it. Not saying it still wouldn't work, but it's harder to protect your IP. Number three, I would say is don't spend all the money on a trademark and a patent and all that because a lot of products that you may think you want to patent and spend the 15 grand or 20 grand to do it. By the time you get the patent, the product might not no longer might be successful. So you got to be careful with that. We went through that with sanitizer bracelets. By the time we got the patent, it was too late. There were already 25 knockoffs. I hope that helps. Yeah. Okay. I just got a question from by Carolina. I am bilingual. Is it better to choose one language or it's okay to do both at the same time on my TikTok account? Sadly, TikTok really puts us in a box. So what's going to happen is, Whatever video picks up steam, that language is going to be what you're recognized for. That's what the algorithm is going to probably put you into. I will say this. There's a local girl who started speaking to her audience in Spanish. She's Spanish. She finally just quit doing both, quit doing some English, some Spanish. I saw the moment she just chose Spanish and to speak to one person, because you want to think of the person you're talking to. Now, in Robert's case, He's talking very general. It's a very rare, but this works. It works for him, but it's rare. If you're just starting, Robert also had a very great place to start. He started with 80,000 followers and just blasted off in this general category, right? He still had 80,000 followers to start. Right now, if you're really trying to just pick up steam and get the snowball rolling, you just pick to what, who, what one woman, who are you solving their problem? Is it someone who speaks the one language or another and starts speaking to her? And I understand that some people are bilingual, but the algorithm's not going to like that. It's just not. What do you think, Robert? Yeah, and I want to touch on something that a lot of people don't know, and it's kind of crazy. But if you're looking to build a bigger audience in Latin America, uh, Mexico, Spain, anywhere like that, keep in mind that they're very much behind the times as far as um, content. So you might want to start focusing your efforts there if that's your audience first yeah. on, on Facebook, because Facebook is still the biggest platform for the younger crowd in those countries. Really? Yeah. So younger crowd in like in Spanish speaking countries. Yes. Yeah. I'm wow. working with a different actress right now on her personal branding. And I asked her why she made so much content and focus so hard on Facebook instead of Instagram and TikTok. And she showed me her metrics and it was unreal. And then she showed me some links and those countries are just more focused on Facebook still because they just don't have the modern technology of the phones and other stuff, but yet they're rabid fans. So it was just interesting to learn that because I didn't know that. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, what? Let me talk to uh, Trinic. So the construction company where to put the website I don't understand the question. I mean, you're going to put the website online. If you're going to build it, I would say for construction, you could use um, Squarespace. Um, you, could, you could use WordPress. You could use Shopify. The key to a construction website is just making sure you have good SEO and good call to action to get people to sign up for an email or a quote form. Okay. Is it better to bootstrap or raise money for a startup as a non-technical founder I'm trying to keep these questions like 
more personal branding questions, like social media questions. But if Robbie, if you want to answer that one real quick. I'm always a fan of bootstrapping at first till you get to a better point, a mid-level point. So when you raise capital, you're not giving away most of the company. Um, but if bootstrapping means you have to go too slow because you can't do what you need to do because you're bootstrapping, then that's a problem as well. So a lot of it depends on if speed is important or not. Guys, drop your social media, personal branding questions in below. That's what we're focusing on here. Um, how do you know if or when you have a good product idea? Does it solve a problem? Like, do people need it? Is it something that anyone could just white label right away? What do you think, Robert? Uh, the bigger the problem, the bigger the payday, unless you really kill it um, on branding and it's an impulse buy, like Silly Bands. Silly Bands doesn't solve a problem, but it is fun and tradable and collectible. And, you know, they're back again now and they're really, really blowing up again. So, but for the most part, the bigger the problem, the bigger the payday. Love it. Someone just asked, Bcaps asked, how much does the title of your live matter? I think it matters because you have to think as a consumer, like when we're scrolling on TikTok, does something catch your eye? I'm even thinking about taking the name of my live, like, at, like the Power Hour title and changing it to just being the topic of like changing the name of the live to the topic. So people know what they're really coming in for. I think that's a good question. I think it does matter. I think that especially if you don't have a following yet, it matters more than ever because people need to know what they're about to see. What do you think, Robert? I agree. Sophia, can you take that one from Chloe? That's a good one. Oh, yes. Okay. Trin Quintana says, if we get a one-on-one, -on -one, how much to work with me by the hour is about 200. Uh, I do accept three VIP clients a month, and that is about $5,000. And that's working with me every single day. And you have access to me literally the whole day. It, it's pretty cool. Robert, um, what is it for you? What's your one-on-one -on -one price? My one-on-one -on -one price right now is 500 an hour. Okay. So, and both of us, you can book the link in our bio. Uh, Chloe says, suggestions on finding funding for the startup business when you're just coming out of school. Was that the one you wanted me to answer? Um, no, the one below it, but I can take that one. Yeah, take um, that one. Yeah, there's just so many sites out there. You can look at AngelList. You can look at just there's a bunch of sites out there. Just Google how to get funding kind of thing. But I would start out with your funding locally. Go to friends and family. Put together a nice pitch deck for them. Um, that's pretty simple to do. And then go to them and try to raise the capital friends and family first because that's going to be the least painful. And it's going to be the best way for you to get started. And I have a very unconventional word of advice for this. I love hanging out at risky bars and just making friends with people because you never know where that connection is going to go. You truly never know. Cause if you show up as a businesswoman and start networking, sky's the limit. I do it all the time and it works wonders. Okay. How to monetize my TikTok? Okay. Latoya, the first thing will be creating a TikTok that is specific to one problem that you're solving or one type of entertainment and posting consistently and then deciding, do you want to sell a product, like your own product? Do you want to sell your own service? Do you want to sell your own coaching? Or do you want to be an influencer for a specific niche? Those are the four questions you got to ask yourself. Once you figure that out, just start creating content consistently, knowing you're not going to get paid for it. Because what's going to happen is one day, something's going to stick. And I want when people come to your profile and they're like, well, Latoya's video went viral. What else does she do? Your profile filled with reasons of why they would follow you, value in that same thing that you went viral for. So it's very important that you stay consistent. This is where I want to teach people because I made mistakes. I made silly content for years and I'm shifting in the algorithm now. That is a challenge. Don't do that to yourself. Ask yourself first, what do I love? What do I want to share? What do I ultimately want to sell and start creating content around that? Then just start creating every single day. Make creating content your priority and then go to work and do whatever else in your life. But no matter what, creating content for that specific niche becomes your job over anything else and it's going to eventually snowball. Moving forward, 
having your own personal brand on point is going to be more and more important as we progress into the gig economy more, influencer economy more, more platforms because influencer marketing works so well are going to be hiring micro influencers more. And, and one way to look at it in thinking back to the basics is if you look at your content on Instagram, TikTok, or wherever you're putting content, look at it as your resume. Because if you're putting it out there just because you feel like you're putting out silly stuff and there's no rhyme or reason, that's fine if you're not trying to build a personal brand. Right. But in the end, you want it to be your digital resume so people can go, oh, she went viral for this, but oh my God, she's really good at this. And they can look back. And so it's just really Why do you important. sound like me right now? <laughs> what? So why do you sound like me right now? <laughs> I don't sound like you. Um, <laughs> yes, anyway, you so, so that's important to me is just to make it a digital resume so people can really know what you are and who you are. Um, relatable Robert you've made millions of dollars does building a personal brand help you or make you a target that is a fantastic question um, I've been a target for 15 years so I deal with a lot of frivolous lawsuits a lot of hate a lot of blackmail and all of the above but the upside to me being a public figure and having a good following on Instagram and TikTok and everything is way more worth it. So it doesn't matter to me because I know who I am as a person and everyone that does business with me and is involved with me knows. So I don't care about what the naysayers say. So for me, it's well worth it being a target. Someone asked, do we do, do you get a, well, I do you to get a 10 minute consultation. Me and Robert just offer by the hour. So if you want to work with us, you'll have to book through the booking link and you'll get a full hour. Is it better to run ads or stick to organic marketing for growing your personal brand? 100%. This is the gold rush for building your personal brand. If you want to do this for free right now, which is only the cost of your time, start building it now. If you need help, this is what I do. I'm a personal brand coach. The link to work with me is in the bio. You can listen to my podcast to learn more about what I'm about. But it's, it's now's the time. Eventually, everyone's going to have to pay to play. But apps like TikTok, apps like Instagram that are making money for ads, they're always going to need creators and people with an entertaining personal brand. Otherwise, no one's going to be on these apps. So it's very important that there's people still out there creating entertaining content, building a personal brand that is fun, enjoyable, that teaches people something. So now's the time. Run for it, relatable content. Sierra, when it comes to personal branding lessons, Sophia is by far the expert on that. Um, so I would say definitely reach out to her and, and figure out her programs of what works for you. Um, I focus, other than my personal brand and a couple people that I work with, I focus mostly on brand building uh, for consumer brands. So that's, that's kind of my wheelhouse on how to help grow consumer brands to be larger. Yeah, he works with uh, some tech companies and he works with products primarily. Yep. Um, okay, Chloe says, how to monetize TikTok when you're based in Canada and they're not paying creators. Sis, if I was depending on what TikTok paid me, I'd be in the po house, okay? Like, mm -hmm. there's no, you that, like, do not let that stop you. I do not do any monetization from TikTok. I do not, I'm not in the, the creator, whatever it is. I'm not doing it on Instagram right now either. I, I, I sell my own products and services. I also um, let brands pay me to talk about them, specifically one brand, Hello Wisp. I work with the same brand over and over because I love it and my audience knows I love it. They can trust me that I love it because I don't talk about too many things at one time. Start working with a subscription-based company in your niche that you love and you'll never have to worry about an app paying you. It's nice. I mean, it's really nice when I... I was looking actually at my um, profit loss statement and looking at where all my income came from. And I was like, oh, I had no idea that Meta paid me that much this year. I had no idea. It was just a little bucket. And Robert talks about that a lot, like having multiple income streams. And at the end of the day, I surpassed my income goals, shocked myself because I wasn't really counting all these little buckets. Like, I just look at, like, my day-to-day -day activities. What am I booking? Blah, blah, blah. Wasn't counting these little buckets. Those little buckets add up. 
So, but don't get down on yourself because that one little bucket from TikTok isn't going to do anything. At the peak of my TikTok, I only made $1,000 from one viral video with Robert. At the peak of my TikTok, um, that is not worth it to be in the creator program. I would give back that $1,000 any day because I didn't feel like it really added value to anything or me and the algorithm. So don't think you need that. Um, do I need an LLC for my IG name? No, you do not. However, an LLC, as soon as you start making money, is going to go ahead. Yeah, just watch my last, the video today on, on uh, TikTok, oh, yeah. and then you can finish. I discuss the most important things about an LLC, even for creators. So watch it, but then keep going. Yeah, that's important. My advice for you is to start creating. Like before you start spending money, start creating, start generating revenue, then go to, what was it? I just pulled it up for you guys. Let me, it was fba.gov or your secretary of state. And then you follow your own LLC. It's, it doesn't cost much. Do that so you're protected. But you don't need it right away. Just start making money to keep things fair for taxes. Just have a different bank account and different credit cards that you're using for your business to expense things. But don't freak out about like doing everything perfectly from the very beginning. Okay. Former NYC taxi driver for eight years, now Uber driver for three years. Any advice on how to start fresh? Robert, that's one for you. But I can tell you the first step is personal power. Like knowing what you love to do. What did you love? Like when you were doing that, were you really good at talking to people? Were you really good at entertaining your passengers? What was it for you that made people like write five stars and rate you five stars and take that? And take that thing that you love, that energy that you had, and show up on social media with that. Start fresh on social media. Can I take Erica here? Is an LLC better than an S-Corp? Um, it's just different, Erica. You never want to start your company out starting small as an S-Corp because the fees and the structure are more costly. The general rule of thumb is to start out with an LLC and then once you get to a point where you're making sustainable money, say over seventy-five dollars or $100,000 a year, then you can switch to an S-Corp. But that's only seventy-five dollars to $100,000 a year. That's actually profit, right? That is correct. not like, that's like you correct. need to be making a lot of money, a lot of revenue to like on paper and bring home $100,000. Yes, because an S-Corp is more expensive to run in a higher fee structure overall. And yes, you have the tax savings, but the problem is if you switch to an LL or you switch to an S corp, and let's say you go down in profitability and you're only making ten or twenty or thirty grand a year, then you can't switch back to an LLC. So you have to make sure once you're sustainable and once you're making a good profit over seventy five or hundred thousand dollars a year, then you can switch to an S corp, and you will save money on your taxes. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Okay, relatable content asks. First of all, let me just welcome people who don't know. This is the Personal Brand Power Hour. I'm your host, Sophia Spolino. I've got my dear friend here, Robert Croak. He is the financial literacy guy here on TikTok. I am live coaching you to build a profitable personal brand on social media. Robert is an expert in financial literacy as well as uh, product branding. And we're just here answering questions. So Relatable Content asks, how do you know when a sponsor is actually going to pay you if they pay works on performance? I do not work with a company that is going to pay me based on performance. I know that my performance top game. I know that I know what I'm doing. I also give them the usage rights based on my fee, a high fee to have the usage rights and to put ads on my videos. I will not work with someone if they want to pay based on commission. It's bullshit. Now you can be an affiliate for any brand, that's awesome. But if they reach out to you and want you to make videos and they want to use your videos on their platform and they want to put ads on your videos, they need to pay you. They need to pay you. And you can say no to anyone that doesn't. Gifting is an offensive thing to an influencer because as an influencer, we still have to pay taxes on that shit. It is so offensive. So I literally respond to brands. I, I don't really take time to do it anymore because I don't need to. But in the past, I would respond to brands like, this is my career. My content is top notch. I strategize for these videos. 
I write scripts for these videos. I set up photo shoots for these product shoots. I do not do anything for a gift or for commission. That is absolute bullshit. Because at the end of the day, you need to get paid for the content you're creating. That is an asset for that brand. Because when they give you something, there's something in the small print that they can use that content and for most times. And so just gifting isn't enough. You're giving them an asset, a digital asset for their brand. You're using your platform, your social equity to take up space and talk about another brand. And if you do that too many times with your audience and slingshot them around, they're not going to trust you. So only work with brands long-term and brands that respect you. Love that we're still friends. Makes me happy. Oh, makes us happy too. Um, let's see what else. And then I probably, okay. So how did you start on influencing dating Robert? Um, actually, whenever I met Robert, Robert started following me because he wanted to do, Mark started following me because he wanted to do market research because I was a micro influencer at the time. Right? Like that's how this all started. That's part of the story. It is. It's a good story. You should just tell the real story. Okay, the real story is I was marketing myself using every way possible, even dating apps. So I had set my dating apps. I would buy Tinder Gold and I would go into a different zip code and I would put from zero to 100 men and women because I didn't realize, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know that I should be speaking to one target audience. Instead, I just put men and women and I wasn't trying to date even women at this time. Like I didn't even, I hadn't come to terms with my sexuality. So like, Truly, I was just on Tinder raking up followers and Robert sees me and he swiped left on me because he said I was too young. I was 26 at the time, fresh 26. And he swiped left, but he followed me on Instagram. And then I saw he followed me. And at that point, I was vetting anyone who followed me because at least at this point, I was blocking like any creepy guys because I knew I was going to be marketing to women at some point. So I was allowing men to follow me if they looked like maybe they had like rich wives who would want to buy my products one day. But I saw him and I was like, it says creator of silly bands. So I Googled. I Googled. I Googled net worth of the silly bands guy. And then I slid into his DMs and I was like, hey, are you looking for a wife? Literally, those words. Are you looking for a what? The truth comes out. Mm -hmm. And he said, are you looking to grow as an influencer? Because I spend a lot of time like in Hollywood. And I was like, I don't want that from you. I just, I, I, I'm looking for a nice husband. I thought I was. I didn't know I was a lesbian. <laughs> so hey, we, had, we had a good run. Let me answer this question. We did. Uh, of all the sources of income out there, why did you choose to start a unique e-commerce brand? Great question, Relatable. Um, for me, it's about buckets like Sophia said earlier. You know, you hear the phrase all the time that all millionaires have seven sources of income. Yep. It's, kind of, it's kind of a fallacy because almost all millionaires started out with one source of income, maybe two. Then once they're generating a lot of income, then they diversify. So always understand that key step because I don't want a bunch of people running around trying to create seven sources of income at once. It doesn't work. Don't listen to the fake gurus. Mm. Start with one, maybe two. Really get good at those and develop a good source of income. Then diversify. The reason you want to diversify is because you want to make sure you're not in one industry that's going to get slaughtered by a recession like the real estate industry or the crypto industry. If you have all your eggs in crypto and crypto goes you know, down 70% like it is right now, you're done. You wanna diversify. So for me, I have a lot of my income in e-commerce, but I also have real estate, restaurants, equities. Speaking uh, of restaurants, that's... someone just said miss the old main event. <laughs> what? So yeah, Jules 4242, one of your oh old restaurants. God. Miss old main event. Yes, everyone misses the old main event. Me too. Anyway, so getting back to that, um, um, where, where did he go? Relatable. Um, yes, so diversification, but I love e-commerce because I believe it is one of the great passageways to wealth because it's fast. If you have a good idea, you can grow immensely and quickly. 
Um, and so that's why I love e-commerce. Love it. Okay. The mothership says so happy for you, Sophia. You're such an inspiration. Thank you for everybody who missed it today. I was specifically coming into personal brand power hour to be talking about how I leveraged my personal brand when I left Robert, not for a bad reason, just cause I was a lesbian and <laughs> I didn't know how I was going to make it on my own. There's rumors out there, Robert, there's rumors that you like gave me money, like just handed me money when I left. Can you like, can you speak to that right now? Like, is there any truth to that? They, the, uh, no, but I, I won't even bring it up. Never mind. No, I did not give Sophia money when I left. Absolutely not. I, I did ask because I was scared to death. I mean, I we, did ask. we ended on good terms. It was fine. We did. And he knew that at that point I had the tools to be successful on my own. And I think that is like, the most empowering thing too, because if I would have taken anything from you and continued to like depend on you, I wouldn't have got here. Like it took taking a leap and like just jumping off and being like, okay, God catch me. And like really hustling every day. So thank you for saying I'm an inspiration. For those of you who missed it last night, I posted my literal in real time response to getting my profit loss statement for 2022. And I, I surpassed my goal for the year and I couldn't believe it. I didn't know how I did it, but the way that I did it was having multiple buckets. And because I built a personal brand, so many opportunities come to me because of the leverage I have on social media, because I have 333,000 followers across platforms, brands come to me, people come to me. I coach other women how to do this so you can have financial freedom. If you want to work with me, the link is in the bio. Also, if you love this vibe, I host Social Equity Podcast. There's a new episode every Monday. It's absolutely free, and you can listen to it. The link is in the bio. Okay, people are asking, were we married? Um, no, we were not married. Anytime I talk about my ex-husband, he was awful. Robert, we've always had, like, a good friendship, so no. Um, we were not married. We dated for three years, though. Um, oh, Robert, he's someone, GM channel says you're a great inspiration. I started working for myself because of you. That's oh. amazing. Okay. Sierra it. says, are you starting, if you're trying to build a brand, do you suggest building a personal brand first or both? Okay. Both. I, I will debate you. I think a personal brand first. Okay. Here's why people buy from someone they know and trust. Unless your brand is actually like tech that like doesn't have a face, I feel like I feel that you would need to sell it with your face. I think it's so important that people trust you. But also if you yeah. tell us the industry, the business, like let us know because that will help us answer that question. That does help. But the flip side of that is there's a lot of big brands out there that you don't know who the face is or who is behind it. It's just, you know, a corporation or a group of people and not all brands. I'm glad more and more brands now are having the founders front facing because then when they are really great founders and great people, there's this social proof and trust that comes yes. into play in the brand. Um, so I, I think it's both. I think the personal brand part is important, but not all people. I'm developing a product right now with a woman. She is incredible. She's like, I don't want my face in front of this. We will hire somebody that's the face of the company. But that's I don't fine. Want You're going to hire someone, right? That right. like, they literally take over that TikTok account and they're showing up every day as if it's theirs. That is so important. Like guys, I don't know if you know, right now, I am one of the faces of Wisp, which is a huge healthcare company. I can't go out the door without someone being like, you're the Wisp girl. So I have my own personal brand. And because of my personal brand, a huge company reached out to me and they're like, we love what you do. So now I get paid in so many different ways. Um, okay. Someone says I've been on TikTok for months. This is the best live so far. Thank you for sharing knowledge. Thank you. If you I love what you're listening. I was the surprise guest. He was. If, if you're loving listening to this, you're going to love my podcast. Go subscribe right now and you're going to love Robert's content. Follow him. He posts new financial tips every day. My podcast, I drop a new episode every Monday. And then both of our content is highly inspirational and motivational. So if you're loving this, uh, invite just friends. For, just for you guys, I haven't talked about it yet. I am launching a private community that will be launching next week called Money Mindset. 
yeah. because there's more there's more to wealth and developing strong businesses and creating wealth and, and financial stability than just the money part. There's the mindset part. So I'll be launching that private community in the next week or so. And uh, there will be a free, a free portion of it, which you guys will get some great value and then also a paid portion. So I will update you guys as soon Ooh, as it's ready. I want to talk to you behind the scenes about structure free to paid, please. Cause I'm going to be launching yep. mine too. I want to know like what that structure looks like. Okay. So someone just said they are tech. So if you're tech, uh, you def you don't need to have your face in the brand. You'd want to actually probably hire someone like Robert um, to help you with that, with the product side of branding. And he could do that. If you're looking to grow your personal brand, I'm the girl for you and I can coach. But if it's tech or product, I feel like Robert's your guy. Okay. Uh, photography business. You live in Vail trying to market to high end. Um, if you're trying to market to high end, you need to show up, you need to show up with your face. You need to tell stories of how you solve clients problems, how maybe a photographer canceled on a bride on the day of her wedding. And you showed up and you like saved the day. You need to talk about these luxurious experiences that you create these intimate, beautiful memories with brides and how you're, you're creating these moments that are so special. And why it's important that people invest in working with you because this is one of the most important days of their life and they shouldn't cheat, go cheap and cut corners on their wedding day, which is going to be documented forever. And you're helping them leave a legacy, which is a lot of how I brand my social media agency, Legacy the Agency. It's like you're trying to let people know that like how important this content will be for them for years to come and marketing yourself as the absolute best in the world and showing up as that Sierra every day in your content. Don't half ass it, show up looking nice and really, really, really don't, don't wait to post consistently post new content of all the beautiful places you're going to all the places you're traveling to as a photographer, let people know working with you is a luxury and that they might need to be on a wait list. Just like right now to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you got to go to the wait list. The link is in my bio. It's full in two weeks. There's going to be one new opening if you want to work with me, VIP, every single day having access to me for four weeks, four weeks, it could be life-changing for you. What is it, Robbie? Nothing. I said VIP. Oh, thank you. Yes. VIP for four weeks. Okay. We're about to have to end this because I've got to run because I actually work in the evenings with my team. And I think this was one of the most incredible lives ever. What do you think, Robbie? Um, I think it's always going to be good because you're very organized and you have a very specific kind of criteria and focus on what the live is going to be rather than just getting on and just going nowhere. Um, so that helps. And then, of course, having yours truly to bring some value is nice because we yeah. can help each other because we have distinctly different skill sets, but they mend well together in business and finance. I agree. Thank you for being my dear, dear friend and continuing to, to be that to me. Yes. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Okay. Guys, thank you for watching this live. If you enjoyed it, come back next week at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time for the Personal Brand Power Hour with me, Sophia Spolino. I am the host of Social Equity, the podcast. I would love if you listen to it. The link to subscribe and listen is in my bio. If you want to work with me, apply to my VIP program or have a one-time session just to see what it's all about, the link's in my bio to work with me. If you want to see more behind the scenes, go ahead and follow me on the camera app. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to say it here. Um, my social handle on every platform is at Sophia Spolino. You could type in Sophia Spa like spaghetti and I will come up. Jen, you're so welcome. I look forward to seeing you on my books for a one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to have so much fun. If you got value from this, you need to go to the link in my bio and sign up for my email list. The email list is amazing because it offers you so many resources that we talked to tonight. They're organized. They're there for you. You're going to get my free book, How to Get What You Want, How to Manifest Exactly What You Want. It is only 11 pages long. It should have been called How to Manifest for Dummies or People Who Are Really Busy, like us, right? We're out here hustling. We're out here trying to build our brands. You ain't got time for that. You ain't got time to read whole books and sit there. Like, awesome. I encourage you to read. Like, I love reading. I listen to Audible all the time.
But if you're going to just like sit and read something, I can tell you in 11 pages how to get what you want and you can implement it. You can journal about it. It's life changing. 11 pages. It's free. It's free. Just go to my email list. Sign up for it. When you sign up for the email, you're going to get so many social media tools, tools that I use day in and day out, things that you need for your business, for building your personal brand. Now, if your question didn't get answered here tonight, that's okay. I'm going to be back here every Monday at seven o'clock and there might be a different guest every time. If you want a one-on-one -on -one with me or you want me to audit your social media for you to look at what you're doing and go, oh, we could tweak this and you could be making so much more money. The link in the bio, there's, there's multiple ways you can work with me. The first is getting a social media audit. It's under a hundred dollars and it's going to help you so much. Like the reviews of my audits are wild. Just go look at my coaching highlight on Instagram and you'll be able to be like, whoa, holy shit. She really helped people with that. Two, you can book a one-time session. My one-time session, the link is in the bio. Three, you can apply for my VIP program where you get access to me. Like literally you can text me every day for four weeks and I'll help you build your personal brand. I will help you learn how to start making money online. If you already have a successful personal brand, we're going to take it to the next level. And four, if you don't want to build your brand for yourself or you want someone to edit your social media, you want someone to create beautiful content for you, my social media agency, Legacy the Agency, would love to do it for you. The link is in my bio. Holla, uh, go ahead and DM me on Instagram or sign up the link in my bio. Erica, link in bio, book with me. Or if you have any questions first, reach out to me on Instagram in my DMs. Oh, Crystal, hi. Hello. Thank you for saying you're proud of me. Thank you. Crystal was one of the first people to look at me and, and, and just see so much more. And I'm so grateful she did because here I am being able to help so many of you. This was the most incredible live. I can't believe that we've been here for, what time is it? Oh my God, it's been two hours and 10 minutes. Guys, two hours and 10 minutes. All I know is with God and a personal brand, anything is possible. And if I could do, if I could leave and live my truth and in one year go from crying in a car, not knowing how I was going to pay my rent or how I was going to buy a car and make the payment to picking myself up off the floor and going, okay, you can do this and you're not going to go get a regular job. F that, no way. And using, using what God had already given me like a platform and using it for good to help other people. I'm telling you, as soon as you start thinking, how can I help people? Your profitability is going to go way up. Unless your gift from the universe is entertainment and co comedic acts. And you're not depending on trending sounds for that comedy. Start helping people. If you, if you take away anything, anything from this life, you can do it. And if you don't know what to do yet, what is the thing your friends call you for advice? Whether that is fitness, whether that is styling, whether that is what vitamins you probably need. Like there's so many ways to make money online as an influencer or as a coach. And coaching is so unregulated. As long as you're not giving people financial advice or you're not like a, trying to be a doctor, like just, just be a coach. And you can help. You can use your actual experience. And you can charge a lot for it. A lot for it. I've worked so hard to get to 333,000 followers. I charge because I can help people literally go from zero to 800,000 followers. I charge because I can help people go from 2,000 followers to 10,000 followers. I charge because I can help people go from 2,000 views to 200,000 views overnight, overnight. Yes, Caitlin, I love it. Okay, NYC Free, first of all, NYC Free, I know your handle, thank you for always supporting my content. Hala, thank you, thank you for the avocados, Bumpy. Um, okay, Caitlin, you need me? Girl, get in my DMs on Instagram, go sign up for a coaching call, let's rock this out. In two weeks, I have one spot opening for VIP. That means you get access to me all the time. Everyone else is by appointment. So 
Go sign up, apply for my VIP program. There will be one spot opening in two weeks and maybe in a month after about one more. There is a wait list that is growing. <laughs> Go sign up. Um, let's see. Is being in Canada okay? Heck yes. I love it. Um, a lot of my clients actually live all over the world. I've coached women in Australia. Um, and a lot of my clients right now come from Florida and California. Okay. Oh, thank you, NYC Free. And Erica, yes. DM me on Instagram or go book that first call. Your birthday's coming up. This needs to be your birthday gift to yourself. Invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. Brooke says, how old am I? I am 30 years old. I'm kind of age ambiguous because I do Botox. <laughs> So people like either go, you're only 23 or they're like, think I'm 45. It's, it's funny. Um, guys, thank you for the most incredible two hours. Two hours. I love y'all. Without you guys, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Without you guys following and being a part of the journey. And like, I want you to learn something from that. Because I told my story on social media, I can charge because you relate to me, I can be shared by you to your friends. Because I connect with you personally. Because you feel a like connection, you feel like you know me, you're going to listen to my podcast. Because you feel like you know me, because I have a very personal, personal brand, you're going to pay me to help you. I can teach you how to do this. You can do it too. You can be crying on the floor. Okay, you could be crying on the floor going, God, thank you. I couldn't believe like how much money I could be making. You can do this too. There is nothing that you cannot do without God and a personal brand. Let's see, how have I been? Oh, hey, Brooke. I've been wonderful. I've been so very blessed. Oh my God. So blessed. So blessed. Y'all, the sky is the limit. What do you love? How can you do what you love and help people? Show up on social media. Show up as the authority. It's not about being an influencer. If you don't want to be an influencer, fine. It is about showing up as the authority. That is your security. Because if you are the leader in your industry, whether you go to apply for another job, whether you want to be paid by a brand to talk about products in that industry, or you want to coach in that industry, you're building social equity for the rest of your life. And this is the gold rush. It will not be as easy to build a personal brand in the future. It just won't. Use this time now. Use this time now to not have to pay, to not have to pay in the future to be seen. Right now, if you learn how to strategize your personal brand, I don't care if you don't work with me. Go find somebody who's done it who's accomplished what you want to accomplish in this life and pay them to teach you. It doesn't matter if it's not me. Pay them to teach you. Work fast. Take advantage of this moment now. Now. Who else has chills? Who else knows that this live is for them? That they were made for a time like this, to be on this call, to know this is the thing. This is the thing. She just gave me the kick in the booty. The little booty. She needed the kick. Yes. Well, I love it. I love it. Erica says she's got chills. I get chills too because I love what I do. I love helping you guys. And my favorite thing is helping women who just never saw it in themselves before. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you. Women who never saw it in themselves before, who didn't know that this could be possible, who didn't know that freedom could be possible, that didn't know that seeing the worst in themselves could be possible, that didn't know they could get paid to do what they love. You can. You were made for so much more. You were made for what you love. That thing that you do where you're just like, mm, I love doing it. Whether that's art, whether that's helping people with your words, whether that's styling, whether that's fitness, you can do it. I can show you how to do it. I'd love to show you how to do it. I love helping women win. I love it. I, I'm so glad that you spent this time with me. If you've enjoyed this, please, right now, go to the link in my bio. You're going to get my free ebook, How to Get What You Want, okay? How to Get What You Want. It is a manifestation book broken down into 11 pages. 
only 11 pages of magic, okay? Hey, Byron. Hey, Reverse Beauty. Okay, 11 pages. And, and it's free. My ebook's free. Go get it. My podcast is free. Go listen to it. But if you want me to audit your social media, if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, the links are in the bio. Go apply. I would love to have you in my VIP program when I have an opening to enroll someone. I only accept three clients at a time. If you want to be one of those, go sign up now. Get on that wait list. Also, if you don't want to be on the wait list and you want an appointment now, you can book a one-time session and come back to VIP later. If you need social media support and you don't want to do it yourself, you're like, I don't want to do it myself. I am a busy CEO boss. I don't have time for this. Hire my agency. We will do your social media with excellence. I don't want to leave. I'm having too much fun. <laughs> Guys, all the questions were so good. Okay. 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 I want to know what you want to hear about next week in the personal brand power hour. So go to my most recent TikTok and start asking all the questions. Like just start leaving comments, any social media help, any personal branding help, drop those comments. <laughs> you hang up first. Like we're in a relationship. We're just like, you hang up first. No, you, no, you hang up first. <laughs> okay. Go like, I love it. I love that. I can still be a little sexy in my content. Like we can be playful and like, you guys like know my life. Like that is what personal branding is. Yes. I love it. I love that y'all know me. We know how to joke with each other. Like we've been in it together for years. I love it. It's like long-term relationship vibes. <laughs> Thank you, Caitlin. Okay. So where was I? Oh, go to my most recent video and drop your question. Because next week, that is what we're going to cover. Or go to my Instagram DMs, drop your questions, because I cannot wait to answer them for you. And if you want help, you know where to, to find me. Link in my bio, book a consulting call. I want to help you go so much faster than I went. I want to help you see yourself so much stronger than you've ever seen yourself before. I want you to see yourself as like a lion in life that it, like there's no option but to win. Because there isn't. There is no option but to win when you shift into that mindset. And like social media strategy, but but mindset's everything. It's everything. I wouldn't have got here. Y'all wouldn't have got here if I didn't believe in myself. And I didn't surround myself with people who believed in me. Like I can think of so many people. Like Crystal, I just came in. My friend Meryl. Um, my friend Andre. Robert encouraged me throughout the year. Who else? Oh, my ex-girlfriend that everyone knows about. Like, she encouraged me every day. Like, Sophia, you can do this. And, and I did. And I'm telling you, the first time you get paid really good, you're just like, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And then, like, the momentum. The momentum of seeing something good happen in your life for the first time could change your life forever. The momentum of being around the right people could change your life forever. Do not underestimate that. And if you don't have that, God, let me coach you because I know that I like focus on social media, but anyone can tell you works with me that like my coaching is also like life coaching hybrid. Like we're going to uproot the negative mindset and just completely Go in there and heal these wounds and help you see yourself as the powerful co-creator of your reality. You and God, baby, because with you, your personal brand and belief and whatever you believe in, okay, whatever. But there's something greater than us up there, okay? Me, I connect to God. I connect to Jesus. I connect to um, lots of things. But I grew, I grew up a uh, Christian. And even though I don't call myself that anymore, I still really connect to God. Like me and God, we tight. Okay. There is like an energy connection there. And I know that with God and a personal brand, anything's possible. It's a belief in myself and God. You can do this. You can do this. I love y'all. Have an amazing night. Yay, Will. So excited. Go read it. Go journal about it. Go journal about it. Oh, one-on-one -on -one relationship with God for sure. That's right. One-on-one, -on -one, baby. You don't need no church, okay? You can go, sure, but you don't need it. Like, it's you and God.
I get on the, the ground like Sky Daddy. Like, who needs a sugar daddy when you got Sky Daddy? Or in my case, Sky Mommy. Okay? Like, she is generous. You ask, you will receive. Ask for what you want from your clients. Ask for what you want from your audience. Ask for what you want from God, and you will receive. Thank you, Caitlin. I love it. I love it. Okay, y'all have an amazing night. This was so much fun. If you've got more questions, go drop them in the comments because we'll answer them next week. Thank you for watching the Personal Brand Power Hour.